turns out our ears are far less reliable at locating sound than we might think. And we have an experiment to prove this today, especially when the sounds are directly in front of us. Researchers at the University of Auckland have used spoons to reveal surprising auditory illusions, helping them better understand how our brains process and interpret what we're hearing. Sam Schwarzkopf, Health and Science Associate Professor, is behind it and with me at the desk. Sam, good morning. Good morning. Great to have you here. So tell me what it is that you were trying to, the study was trying to find out, or what was the hypothesis? So we actually, quite by accident, we discovered this perceptual effect where, as you described, we mishear sounds that are in the central planes or right in front of us, sort of this axis. We tend to hear them to be behind us. And you know, it was literally by accident, we played around in our kitchen with spoons, right? Uh, because we read about owls and th they can hear really well where things are and we wanted to know you know, how, how well can we do that? And so we found this phenomenon which sort of puzzled us. So, so the, a sound, I, some, there's a sound in front of me, yeah. and I think it's behind me, Yeah. A if my eyes are closed. Yeah. So we, could, we can demonstrate it if you want. <laughs> Please. Um, I hope it works. Oh. I've never tried it in a studio. All right. <laughs> so you would ask people. You might people, have to, yeah, okay, there we go. There's a yeah. good angle. All right. You ask people to actually stand on this side, to close their eyes and, yeah. you know, if you trust them not to cheat, so don't cheat, or you can use a blindfold. I'm on camera, I can't cheat. <laughs> <laughs> They'll know. Well, that's true. Uh, okay, and then I'll just tap these spoons and you tell me where you hear them. It, at best is if you just say in words, okay? Okay. Right. Above. Behind. Left. Right. Above, behind. In front, behind, to the right, above, Try my mama. in front. Ah, <laughs> the last one you got right. <laughs> ah, but so, what, all the others were wrong. So the last few were in front of you. <laughs> so did I get them wrong? You heard them I? above or behind, which is precisely what we've been finding. So, so and typically, they were mostly people hear that behind them, but you know, it might be above, but sort of above, above behind. So you know, it can be a mixture. But it was actually in front of me when you're doing that. Yeah, the last few were all in front of you. How weird! They were all laughing. So, 50-50. <laughs> um, do you know what's funny about this? There's a sound, a ticking sound in my car, and just yesterday, my mm. husband and I were having quite an intense argument <laughs> about where the sound was coming from. And I was saying, it's in the front, we need to get the front checked. And he's saying, no, no, it's in the back, it'll just be something to do in the boot. So is this something that you, although we had our eyes open, <laughs> it actually doesn't make any sense. Well, it does, because I mean, you know, obviously when you see me with the spoons and it, I'm in front of you, you know, you probably wouldn't say it's behind you. But if it's a sound that you don't know actually where it's coming True, from. True, you can't right? see that. And yeah. that's precisely one of the experiments we want to go to next. Because obviously, you know, as fun as this is, and it's great for, let's say, a next barbecue dinner party, this is, you know, you can't do as many experiments with walking around with spoons. But what does it say about our ears if we need our eyes to hear? Yes, I think it's, it reveals a gap in our understanding of how we hear sounds and where sounds are, right? It's, it's uh, quite a fundamental thing that we don't actually understand. So, uh, I mean, the fact that we confuse back and front, that's not that surprising, because you need two ears to hear where things are, right? Because they hear slightly differently. But the fact that we sort of confidently think it's behind us, you know, we don't understand why that's happening. Okay, so how do we find that out? So you know, we, we will do more studies on this and under more controlled conditions than using spoons. I mean, that's definitely the next step that we need to do. Uh, but things, for example, that I want to look at is uh, whether it depends on your experience. So people who grew up blind, for example, or with low vision, uh, they, we tend to think that they have more spatially acute hearing, right? Uh, so they might actually be better at this, but we don't know that, right? This has not been tested. So, uh, that's one of the next things to, to understand. Did you try or will you try teaching people, like getting people to close their eyes, and can you teach them <laughs> to, to learn where sounds are coming from, do you think? Yeah, so that's another experiment that I would very much like to do. Why is it important? Why should we hear? Well, I think there's two reasons. Right? One I sort of alluded to, it's the scientific curiosity. We actually, there's a gap in our knowledge, right? And the point of science is to find the gaps in our knowledge and fill them in. 
And so that's what we want to do next. So really to actually understand how the brain works and how our hearing works. Uh, and so, you know, we need this fix also, you know, for, for building new, creating new audio technology, for example, that more accurately replicates what we hear. You know, to understand how to do that, we need to understand hearing. Right? But then the more practical implications is, say, if you have blindness or low vision, uh, you really rely on hearing, right, to cross the road, for example. So in those kind of situations, you know, it's actually quite important that we know where things are by yeah, hearing. True. And of course, it is still important for people who can see as well, right? Uh, but I mean, especially people who are blind, you know, it might actually be really relevant. Yeah. So, and yeah. people, people also need to know which direction to turn, you know, if your husband or wife, if you're having an argument, for example, where you can turn to not hear them. You know, all those things are really important. Hey, good to see you this morning. Love the aviators, by the way. <laughs> Very Thank cool. You. Thanks for coming in. Uh, that is from, forgive me, Sam Schwarzkopf, who's the Associate Professor of Medical and Health Sciences on a pretty cool study, you'd have to say.